To the person reading this. To the person reading this. To the person reading this. My life story is filled with abuse. From a young child all the way through adulthood. From trusted family to teachers and friends. Today I share my journey with you. Because I need you to know and understand how powerful it can be when you believe in someone. I want to inspire hope. To inspire courage. And to let you know that I'm okay. I am restored. When I was very young, I hid from and ignored the sexual abuse by someone close to me, someone I considered my only friend. I was too young to fully understand what was happening and I was scared they would be taken out of my life if I shared what was going on. As I grew older, I decided to tell several adults in my life that I trusted what was happening to me. They didn't believe me, including some family. Some had excuses as to why it was happening, and others just couldn't process it. I was asking for help, and they responded with doubt and silence. I felt alone and damaged. The life continues on. During the summer of my freshman year in college, I became friends with a woman named Dana and her fiancé, Douglas. Soon after we met, Douglas began to take advantage of me. More sexual abuse more pain. I was terrified. I felt unable to say anything to anyone. Why would they believe me? I switched to a different university searching for escape, but the threats from Douglas didn't stop. I was so scared and ashamed I considered suicide. During my visit home to be with my family for Christmas, Dana and Douglas set me up. They tricked me and kidnapped me. I spent a night being beaten, raped, and thinking I was going to die. A call from my mother spooked him enough to take me home. I decided that I had to report what happened. I looked for help and found the Rape Crisis Center. I told a counselor I needed to report the rape to the police, but I was terrified and unsure. The counselor listened. He told me what happened to me was horrible and that it was not my fault. He believed me. Finally, someone believed me. He assisted me through the reporting process. I knew if I kept coming to the RCC, I would have the support to get through the investigation. I was given a voice. I felt empowered. The investigation was transferred to my hometown and the detective assigned to the case said she believed me too. Thankfully, I continued counseling with RCC. Police questioned Douglas and Dana. And finally, in April 2016, the detective contacted me saying, he has been arrested. I thought I was finally safe. He couldn't hurt me or anyone else again. I was so relieved, but... Four days later, he was released. Terror and hopelessness set in. I had a complete emotional breakdown and I cut myself a coping mechanism I'd used in my childhood. I disclosed to a professor at my school what was happening and how it was affecting me. The next morning, campus police took me to a hospital to find out what was wrong with me. I would need to be cleared to return to campus. They put me in the back of a cop car while my roommates and other students watched. I felt like a criminal. The hospital visit was humiliating. I was stripped and searched several times. All my belongings were taken from me. I felt I had no one and nothing left. When a nurse came to give me a shot, I grabbed the needle cap and held it, keeping it in my hands tightly. I wasn't going to give it up. It was a tiny moment of control and a token of holding on to what was mine. After finally getting to speak with their psychiatrist, I was released. After returning to campus, I had a meeting with an employee in apartment life and was asked, don't you see what you did that led to your rape? I couldn't believe it. I was informed by administration that I had two choices. Finish online or withdraw from my classes. I chose to finish online. With that, I packed up my car and drove home. I moved back home and I resumed attending a gymnastics studio. For some reason, I told the owner what happened to me. 
she intently listened as I opened up about my past. She started to cry and hugged me, holding me tight for several seconds. I always wished someone would listen to my story, cry for me, and hold me. I won't ever forget her reaction. I can still feel the hug that she gave me. We were basically strangers, yet she cared so much. I generally dislike hugs, but her tears and embrace said more than any words ever could. She chose to listen. She chose to believe. I had agreed to testify against Douglas in federal court, but I never got the chance. I found out my rapist had died of cancer three weeks prior. There was nothing left to do, no one to prosecute. Case closed. I still have a hard time believing he is gone and cannot hurt me again. But I have hope. I have strength. And I am here. With the support of the Rape Crisis Center, I know I will heal and go on to do what I love. I will graduate in December, hopefully with honors, and go on to receive my degree in counseling. I know my purpose in life, and I know what God has called me to do. I plan to work with survivors, helping them heal. I want to be there for those who need help. I want to be there for those who need believing. Because I know how powerful it can be when someone looks you in your eyes, shares in your tears, and simply says, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you.